Welcome to the RD2B podcast. Each week we sit down with a different registered dietitian nutritionist to showcase the diversity of opportunity in the dietetics profession. Our aim is to dismantle the notion that there is a traditional career path. I'm Carl Barnes, the registered dietitian behind the scenes of RD2B. And I am Jenna Warnock, the RD2B host. Our RD guests share their stories, career paths, and advice to help students like us succeed in the profession. Welcome back to another week of the rd to podcast. I'm your host, Jenna, and we're super excited to feature yet another awesome supervised practice program for aspiring registered dietitians. And so this week, we're going to be uh, sitting down with Dr. Marie Duell Data. She's the program director of the Master of Professional Practice in Dietetics, or otherwise known as the MPPD at Iowa State University. And so we're super excited to sit down with her and just talk about the awesome, wonderful, and really robust program that she offers for aspiring registered dietitians. So yeah, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thanks for the invitation, Jenna. I'm excited to talk about our program and educate your uh, listeners about what the Iowa State MPP online program has to offer. Yeah, great. And so kind of just providing context as to how you currently got your role at Iowa State, can you describe your pathway to becoming program director of this program? Absolutely. Um, So my career started a long time ago as a clinical dietitian in a small community hospital. And I, that is really where I learned of the different areas of dietetics that were exciting for me and some that I was not so excited about. And so I used to work for a management company that was um, managing the food service and clinical aspects of the small community hospital. And with the direction of my food service director, I developed a trajectory in learning about management as well. And from there, I got promoted to clinical nutrition manager um, and managing both food service as well as clinical nutrition in that hospital. Uh, Long story short, I realized I had a knack for management. So subsequently, I obtained a position as the director of a clinical nutrition program only that was uh, supervising dietitians in a 400 bed hospital um, for inpatient and outpatient dietetics as well. Um, And after that, I did my PhD and came into academia where my first position was managing a coordinator program. And subsequently, this position became available at Iowa State to develop the MPP, and um, I was excited about developing a future graduate program, and I accepted this position here, and that was about five years ago, so. Wow, yeah, and definitely given that your program emphasizes in professional practice and dietetics, you have a really strong background in that management side and just really like a lot of different, really strong, good positions that dietitians can have in the field. It's really great that you have that background and you bring that into the program that you're um, directing, which is really great. And so we're going to go more into the like specific layout of your program a little bit later, but first, just to kind of get the um, bird's eye view of people applying to your program, typically about how many students apply to your uh, program versus how many do you accept for your program? That's a great question. And I think things have changed quite a bit since we um, reorganized our dietetic internship into a future graduate program. Previously, we used to take a lot more students um, than we are currently able to just by the nature of the program. We are also not a part of the DICUS um, application system. So the number of applications coming to us has reduced pretty drastically as a result of that. So we get anywhere from 40 to 50 applications and we accept the most qualified students that we think Uh, will be successful in an online program. So that would still be anywhere um, about 30 to 35 students. Uh, At the present time, we would like to increase that number as time goes on. So um, we still offer a significant opportunity for placement in our program compared to some of the other programs. 
Yeah, for sure. And given uh, just the intensity and robust like information that you provide for the interns in your program, it's really great that you offer a plethora of uh, spots and opportunities for students to participate in your program. And so um, some listeners might be unfamiliar with having a graduate degree specifically in a professional practice in dietetics. And so can you specify what makes an MPPD different from other graduate degree options? Absolutely. So this is a great question we get frequently asked. The MPPD is a coursework only program that students can complete in 12 months. Um, from start to finish consecutively, like going semester after semester, three consecutive semesters. Uh, and it integrates coursework as well as supervised experiential learning at the same time in every semester. So some of the other programs, typically the masters of science degrees are where you get to do a thesis or research. Um, our program, because it's 100% online, that option is not available to do research. Um, it is 100% coursework only. So students who are interested in the field of dietetics, uh, this is a great option for them to complete this in a distance program within 12 months. Awesome. Yeah. And I think it's great how you highlighted that um, it's only it only takes 12 months to complete that graduate and supervised practice component, because I just feel like with a lot of different students, they might be thinking, oh, I just have to tack on another two years and then, you know, dietetic internship. But what's great about your program is you just combine everything into one clear and concise uh, one-year program so that those students that do just want to go straight out into the field and become a registered dietitian, you offer a really great opportunity for those students. And so given what the MPPD focuses on, do you see uh, graduated, in, not interns, but graduated students commonly gravitate to a specific niche of dietetics after they graduate? So our program is a generalist program where students complete rotations in medical nutrition therapy, community nutrition, and food systems management. We have two different tracks available in our program for students based on their geographic location. So students who are located in Iowa can apply to the Iowa-based rotations or our cohort. And then the students who are in other states in the country can apply to our nationwide cohort. The reason I'm bringing this up is because students in the nationwide cohort have the ability to self-select their rotation sites based on information that we have provided on our website that is specific to each of these three rotations. So if somebody's interested in sports dietetics, they can incorporate that in their rotations during the program. Similarly, if somebody's interested in pediatric nutrition, they can select hospitals that can help them provide that opportunity as well. We also take that into consideration for students in our Iowa-based cohort with their placements as well. So while there is no specialization within our program, I think our students get a well-rounded experience in different areas of dietetics. And during that experience, students can also find areas of dietetics that they are passionate about and can then find opportunities in those careers after graduation, and also determine if those are areas that they wanna develop further via maybe advanced certifications um, or things of those nature. Yeah, and I think it's great how having that flexibility and that distance component of your program, if a student comes in wanting a specific career to pursue in dietetics, they can start right from the get-go uh, tailoring their rotations towards what specific career in dietetics they want. But then you also have the other side of the coin where if they have no idea what they want to do, they have equal as much flexibility to just get a nice, well-rounded experience in all different types of avenues so that by the end of the program, they have a pretty good idea of what works best for them and what also might not work best for them as a future professional. So that's a really great thing that you highlighted as in like not all of your uh, graduates gravitate towards something specific, but more so you allow them the opportunity to gravitate toward whatever they 
specifically are interested in, which is great. And so we allude, uh, we mentioned a little bit before, as you did as well, about it being an accelerated 12-month distance graduate program. So you cram a whole lot into three consecutive semesters for the graduates for the graduates to end and be able to um, take the RD exam. And so how do you incorporate that graduate MPPD component and rotation sites into this concise program? That's a great question. One of the eligibility requirements for our program is that um, applicants need to be graduates of a DPD program. That is one of the key requirements and how we can graduate entry-level dietitians in a 12-month program. So we build on basics of dietetics knowledge that students have received in their DPD programs and provide additional input into via the classes that we have in our program on areas of practice and information that they need to know to be able to practice at an advanced level. To give you an example, um, some of the competencies for future graduate programs or graduate programs as they're now called um, include things such as um, management of nutritional pharmacotherapy, uh, integrative therapies, and things of those nature. We have classes in our curriculum that address that. Uh, we have classes that talk about integrative therapies and nutrition and how students can take care of patients. It includes information on um, pharmacology, on microbiome, and all of these things are emerging and required for students uh, to be practicing at an advanced level. So we have curated classes that we think would help educate and inform our students on topics that will allow them to be successful as an advanced level practitioner once they graduate. Yeah, and I think it's great how you highlighted all of these new emerging like topics in dietetics where it kind of pairs into why we are progressing towards that graduate degree where so many new different things are being discovered in nutrition where we have to be up to date and at the forefront with those emerging and different topics, which is really great. And so uh, in the combination of the graduate coursework that you mentioned, how are those rotation sites kind of paired with that graduate coursework? So the great part about incorporating didactic courses along the same time as experiential learning courses is students can learn about topics and then be able to apply on site. For example, in the fall, we do we focus on community nutrition rotation as well as topics that they need to know to practice in that environment. Fall is also the time where we have courses that students will need to know to prepare them for medical nutrition therapy that will be in the spring semester. And so spring semester has advanced medical nutrition therapy as well as MNT rotation. And then um, summer is when food systems management is taught. So the courses that are taught each of the semesters uh, when the each specific rotations or, or supervised experiential learning opportunities are provided, they align really well with the topic that they're doing rotation as so students can not apply that knowledge at the same time. So it helps them assimilate that knowledge a little bit better in our opinion. Yeah, for sure. And I definitely, given that it's a condensed program, having that benefit of and being able to retain that knowledge, even though it's fast paced, having that knowledge aspect and then that application aspect together, that definitely helps with having it solidify, stick, and uh, maintain it for that RD exam and also beyond. And uh, even with that, you know, beneficial component of, you know, you're combining that graduate coursework with what you're doing hands-on in those rotations, do you have any advice for prospective students into your program about managing time and those responsibilities of juggling both the coursework and those rotations? Yes, absolutely. So because we recognize the intense nature of the curriculum, um, our rotations are set up to where students are not on site every single day of the week. We recommend about three days a week on site to get the number of hours 
for each of the rotations. So three to four days, depending on how many number of hours they need to complete. And so students can actually manage that in, in coordination with their preceptors so they can flex their time on site depending on what's happening on site that will provide a really rich learning opportunity for the student, as well as the availability and convenience of the preceptors as well. So if um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday works better for their rotation, they can go on site for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. If another schedule works better, students can plan that ahead of time so they know so they can plan how they engage with their didactic curriculum because we post the modules each week we have an assigned timeline for when the modules and the curriculum is going to be available from week to week or some might be every two weeks so students know when the deadlines are for submission of assignments and activities and engagement for example some of the courses have um, reflections that are part of the um, assessments that we use for our students. Some of them have engagement with the peers in their curriculum. Um, so they have to engage and have a conversation about a particular topic um, with the students and post on those. So there are different ways we engage our students, but we provide them with ample time to manage the didactic curriculum as well as their internship. So time management becomes very critically important for students to be successful, not just with their rotation, but in the entire program. And we have information posted on our website under program information that has provided some tools for students who are considering applying to our program to see if an online program is the right choice for them. And that does take into account things like time management and so on. Because if you are not a self-directed learner and are having a hard time managing your time, you are going to struggle in our program. And that is not a good place to be. We want to set you up for success. And so we do talk about time management and other and similar responsibilities so students can be set up for success from day one. Yeah, and I think you cover just a lot of great things in that response, especially with the student have being able to assess, is this program right for me and will I do well in this program? And you, what's amazing is that you guys are very transparent with this is how you are successful with time management, being self, a self-directed learner and things like that, but also being super transparent about, hey, uh, these are when the modules are posted. We give you ample time to plan ahead and you give a lot of, you know, you still offer ample amount of time for the students to do well in your courses because like what you said, you want the best for the student and for them to succeed, which is, um, you know, really great to have as a program. And I'm glad that you touched on that planning aspect regarding those um, rotation sites and that flexibility that students have with securing their rotation sites. And so going more into that component of the program and the actual timeline that students need to secure their rotation sites, given that it's distance, do you guys have a specific timeline or deadline that students need to have their sites secured before the program or during the program? Just giving a little overview of that. Absolutely. So one of the expectations when students apply to our program is that they secure preceptors and or sites for their first rotation. So that would be community nutrition rotation. Uh, we provide a schedule on our website again that students can access. Um, and it tells them how many hours need to be completed in that particular rotation. Um, we also provide specifics on what type of facilities we're looking for for community nutrition. For example, um, if students have access to a food bank, that will serve as a community nutrition site. But we also require students to obtain a WIC site because that is a requirement. So students can choose to complete partial or their entire rotation at WIC, but they can also self-select another site if they want to exp uh, explore and obtain a breadth of experience uh, in those uh, sites the, and the opportunities that they provide. Now, the 
students have the opportunity to either find all sites when they apply to us, but the first rotation site or the first semester's rotations are required. If they find preceptors for the other rotations when they uh, uh, apply to us, that is phenomenal. And it just gives them an extra edge uh, when they're applying, when the program application is reviewed. However, if students are not able to find preceptors or sites for their other two rotations, that does not mean we will not review their application. We oftentimes get majority of the applicants only can find preceptors for their first rotation site. And then during the program, they're given an opportunity and we have defined deadlines where they are required to seek out preceptors for their upcoming next rotation, which would be MNT in the spring. And so they are required to find preceptors and submit their um, commitment letters from the preceptors that they are willing to accept the particular student for rotations on their site. Um, again, details for each of those rotation uh, specific sites are provided on our website. Yeah, and that's and we'll definitely provide the um, link to your website in the description because, um, yeah, you're just providing a lot of great information that if students find something particularly interesting that you mention or uh, that we discuss that they want to learn more about, definitely your website would be an excellent resource, especially with the things that you're discussing. And I and then to take a note on what uh, you just discussed, I think it's great how you highlighted um, that students only need to have their first rotation secured because I know that there's a stigma with a lot of distance um, programs where they need to have everything planned out before they even step foot into their first semester. And while, you know, it's always good to be prepared, you guys have a really uh, great open mind and flexibility and understanding for these incoming um, students because, uh, you know, preceptors might change, situations might change, and you offer that comfortable flexibility, but also still being like, hey, we want you to be on track and still succeed. And you provide them those ample, you know, timelines and open communication for making sure that they do have the sites in time for each semester, which is great. And so that's one example of really great support that you offer for your students. But again, given that it's an online distance format, what other uh, ways do you support your students throughout the program? Thank you for that question, Jenna. I think I will build on something that you just stated a minute ago. The misperception about online programs is that there is no support. You're basically on your own. Um, and one of the things that we do in our program to support student success is each student is assigned one faculty member. Um, and that faculty member stays with them throughout the program and will be responsible for coordinating their uh, supervised experiential learning. So one faculty member may have a number of students that they are supervising throughout the program. Um, so if they get stuck with something, that would be the person that they go to constantly so they can build a rapport and a relationship with this person. And so we'll feel less hesitant if there's a problem that they have, they can go to this person and ask them for advice, ask them for how to move forward. And if they're struggling with something, this will be the faculty member that they go to for advice or remediation. Um, so that is one of the biggest advantages of our program because I don't think that's something that a lot of programs provide. In addition to that, we fully recognize the financial hardships um, that interns and graduate students face when they're going through the program. Uh, previously, when you talked about um, managing time, one of the biggest barriers in managing time is students also often think that they can work during the program. And so um, work becomes another thing that they're managing uh, along with their school, and that can create a lot of stress. So we have provided a lot of opportunities for our students to take advantage of with financial aid and scholarships. So we have several scholarships available for all our students. So one of the reasons why our application is and decision timeline is so early um, because the program starts in the fall and we make our decisions in December the year before, 
because February 1 is the deadline for our College of Human Sciences scholarships, and we want all our incoming students to apply for those scholarships. We also have other scholarships for students who might be interested in studying abroad. We have international partnerships with the University of Ghana, and we send uh, students who are interested to spend a month during community nutrition rotation in the fall to spend in Ghana. And they immerse there and work with the University of Ghana dietetic interns to learn about the community that they're immersed in and participate in assessments in that community level with mothers and infants and work in that community. We also have a shorter study abroad opportunity in the summer, late spring, early summer, that is part of their management rotation where students go to France for two weeks and learn about the food systems there. And so there is financial support available for students who are interested in study abroad opportunities as well. And then we have several other opportunities for scholarships that are available for students based uh, that are available to our foundation. And then recently we established a diversity scholarship for students of color um, and to increase the diversity in our program as well as our profession of dietetics. So in addition to all of these, the university has a lot of support and resources for students who are going through our program. So as part of, since our program is part of the university, students who are enrolled in the MPP have access to all of those support systems that are in place, whether it's for writing, whether it's for communication skills, whether it's for mental health, any of all, all of those opportunities are available to the students in the MPP as well. And so people who say that distance supervised practice programs do not support their students, they just need to listen to this snippet of the recording to just know that none of that is true at all. When I say that that is probably one of the longest lists of support ways that a program has for their uh, students, that is probably the most comprehensive and most like in-depth that I've definitely heard just because you touch on so many different ways that you provide support, whether it be mentally, whether it be financially, whether it be uh, supporting their passions with a study abroad option and still like making sure that if a student has a desire to go a certain path in your program, regardless of the location, you guys actually take advantage of that by being able to, you know, send them across the ocean to experience their rotations in those different environments and just you guys find unique ways and take advantage of that distance option to really like amplify the support that you offer for students, which I think is absolutely incredible. And so segueing all of the awesome like ways that you support your students into what students enjoy most about your program, you've listed like, you know, a super long list of a bunch of different reasons why students would enjoy your program. But have you heard common things that students have said regarding your program or just common trends? Students, like I said, it's a generalist program. So students enjoy the ability to process information that they're learning in class, for lack of a better word, and apply during their rotations or during their experiential learning portions. Um, students also appreciate the faculty support that they receive. Um, so they don't have to go to different people at different times. If they are stuck with something, they have one person, as I said, they've built a rapport with. And those faculty members com communicate with their group of assigned students almost on a monthly basis. So they have group discussions where we're building community within the student group. We are building a community with the faculty member they're assigned. So in addition to some of the topics that they're learning in our program, those are some of the opportunities that students have expressed specifically that they really enjoy. Yeah, awesome. And then kind of switching it to your perspective, um, I'm sure that you've you know, heard a lot of different insight into what students enjoy about the program, but what would you say as the program director is your favorite part of the program? My favorite part of the program is actually seeing the aha moment when something clicks with the students and helping students develop from 
a student to a young professional. That is my absolute favorite part of the program is, is helping um, eligible students become young professionals and be part of the dietetics community. Yeah, and especially, I think it's definitely important to note that um, you witnessed just in like less than a year or, you know, about a year seeing these students turn into young professionals in just, you know, that quick turnaround period. And I think that that speaks for itself, the power of that combination of um, knowledge and learning and that like uh, physical tactile application that your program offers with the format. And so it, it's really great that you see that with um, the majority of the students, if not all of the students, like, you know, progress throughout just a year into young registered dietitians or, you know, just um, new professionals into this uh, field. And it's really great how you're able to see that in just what seems like such a concise period of time, but, the, you know, they learn a lot from it. And so if someone's listening to this um, recording and they're like, oh my gosh, I need to apply to Iowa State, uh, and I need to add it to my list of programs that I want to apply for for my supervised practice. B before they apply to your program, is there anything that you would want that student to know or anything that um, they might not find from your website that you would just want them to know before applying? So I would highly encourage students that are thinking of applying to our program to really spend some time navigating our website. We have recorded short videos that are housed on our homepage um, about the application process, about our curriculum, about why they should apply to us. And anybody who is trying to figure out information about our program, I would like to highlight every Thing about our program, every detail from the international study abroad opportunities to the application, eligibility, or to what rotation side students should be finding, all of it, every single thing about our program can be found under the Future Students tab on our website. We have several sub pages that are highlighted there under the Future Students tab from um, tuition information to scholarship information, program information. And then we also have a section called Frequently Asked Questions. Um, those are questions that students have actually, or prior students or interested students have emailed us previously. So we have compiled all of them together and provided that information on our website for students if um, so they can, those questions can be answered. We also have a generic email set up for students' questions. So after navigating every tab available under future students and after watching the videos on our website, we also have access to a virtual open house recording available on our website. If students still have questions after reviewing all of those, they can email us on the generic website, which is mppisu at iestate.edu. Um, and we will be more than happy to answer any questions that they may have, or if they're not sure about something, they can always reach out to us and we will respond back um, and provide clarification. Yeah, definitely. And I can say, because I've looked at your website a handful of times, the navigation is super simple and easy for the students, and it definitely is info packed. And so I'm glad that you also emphasize that if you do read through, you know, your comprehensive website with all the information and you can't and, it, and you can't find the answer to your question, I'm glad that you emphasized that you guys also just have an email address dedicated to taking in those questions and answering any questions or concerns that students may have, which is really great. And again, like we'll also provide the link in the description of this episode. But yeah, so just we have covered a lot of jam-packed components about your program, then also just distance programs in general. And so just to kind of uh, broaden it out a bit and ask one last question, just about general advice for the listeners, you know, because I know for sure if they're listening to this podcast, they're either thinking about future programs that they're going to apply to, or they are getting ready to apply for future supervised practice programs. And so what advice would you give to these aspiring registered dietitians that are preparing to apply to programs in the future, like whether it be the application process, just general mindset things, just advice? 
Yes, so I would highly encourage students who are looking to apply to either graduate programs or to dietetic internships, spend some time engaging with the websites to learn about the program, learn what their eligibility requirements are. And also, if you are interested in a particular area of dietetics, for example, medical nutrition therapy is a huge one that a lot of students might be interested in. I know when I was a student, I was looking for programs that were heavy on medical nutrition therapy. So if you are that singularly focused, then you also want to evaluate programs that meet your needs. Iowa State is not affili affiliated with a medical school, so we don't have a heavy emphasis on medical nutrition therapy, but all our students are fully competent in medical nutrition therapy and have a varied, exciting experience in that. So ours, as I said previously, is a generalist program. It is not focused on one particular area. So that's something you should find out from the website as well, if there is a specific area of focus and is, does it align with what you're looking for or are you looking for a more generalist site? Also, if it's a program that requires students to find their own sites, um, check and see if there are um, specifics available on what constitutes a good site or not, so they don't find a site that may not be acceptable when their application is reviewed. So those are things that they need to definitely keep in mind. Also check and see how students are supported in their program. What kind of support is available? What resources are available to students if they get stuck? Um, and for allowing for student success, because I think that is why we're here is to allow students to be successful and become young registered dietitians. So if the student is not, or if the program, I'm sorry, if the program is not meeting your needs, then you need to have a set of questions that you get clear specific answers if your needs are being met by the program or not. Um, and if you have questions, reach out and get clarification so you can make an informed decision on which program might allow you to be successful in your educational journey. Yes, and I cannot agree more with that statement. And I think that that's a great note to end on, especially with, you know, the topic of this episode. So yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Data, for talking about the wonderful program that Iowa State offers for aspiring registered dietitians. And I know they'll learn a lot, just not only about your robust program, but just general great advice about the process to becoming an RD. So again, thank you so much. You're quite welcome, Jenna. I appreciate the opportunity to talk about the Iowa State University's Master of Professional Practice in Dietetics program, and I'm happy to answer questions. If students have, they can reach out to me or they can reach out to our generic program, and we will be more than happy to assist them as best as we can.